Good evening. Um, we're continuing our forum for the Anoka County candidates, and for the first time, we uh, in the League of Women Voters are having a candidate forum for the Soil and Water Conservation District Supervisors. This is a, a very um, meaningful thing for me because I have tried very, very hard to find out about these candidates, and sometimes it is very difficult. I've, I've phoned. I have found, tried to find emails, I have gone to websites, and sometimes I just had to send a letter, and, and sometimes I, you know, I was kind of guessing. So it's, it, it's difficult to find information about these people, and they're doing an important job for us uh, in the county. So it's important for us to know who we're voting for and why. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan volunteer organization organized at the local, state, and national level. And um, we encourage citizens to become, in, to participate in their government. While we do study issues and um, take stands on issues, we do not support or, or uh, oppose any political party or candidates. The views expressed in this candidate forum are those of the the candidates, not those of the League of Women Voters. Okay, uh, the Soil and Water Conservation District 3 includes Coon Rapids, Spring Lake Park, Fridley, and Columbia Heights. And there are two uh, candidates running for this position, Nick Pru and Carl Tinglestad. Um, and so we will start with these two, and um, we'll ask Nick, Nick Pru to give his opening statement of two minutes. Sure. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for putting this forum on and including the Soil and Water Conservation Supervisors. Um, I'm running for the District 3 Supervisor position because uh, I'm interested in converse, uh, con conservation, and I know that conservation happens at the local level. Um, I have a strong uh, technical background, and I'm... Uh, I'm positive that I could be uh, an asset to the county and to this uh, to the organization. Um, it's been 40 years or so since the Clean Water Act has passed, and since that time we've had great improvements in our water quality and in our uh, and how we treat the land. Um, and most of this is due to addressing uh, point source pollution. And and since that, you know, we don't have rivers starting on fire anymore and that sort of thing. However, uh, according to the Pollution Control Agency, we're still getting impairments uh, or waters that aren't meeting our water quality standards at a, a rate of 40% of, of the assessed waters. So we still have a long ways to go and a lot of work to do. And most of those um, um, impairments are part uh, or due to non-point uh, non -point source pollution. And so that's really where my, where my interests lie. And um, if you think non-point source pollution is difficult to deal with, we now have uh, multiple different types of impairments that we have to deal with. Not only are we dealing with sediment, too much sediment, too much nutrients, and those types of uh, traditional chemical parameters, we now have to deal with biological impairments. So now we're asking folks at the local level not only to prioritize their projects, um, target them, um, make sure they're cost effective, but they're going to have to be able to hit multiple marks. They're going to have to deal with um, the water quality issue. They're going to have to deal with habitat, biology, the connectivity, geomorphology, hydrology, all of these things that uh, make up a watershed. So, and that's my um, primary interest and um, expertise hmm. that I'll bring to this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carl Tinglestad, your um, opening statement, please. Yes, my name is Carl Tinglestad. I am the incumbent for this office. I have been, uh, I've held it since 2011, so this is my fourth year. I have been active in Anoka County communities since I was a kid, and I am knowledgeable about the emerging issues in Anoka County and engaged in the process that will ensure that Anoka County has the best results. And some of those results have already been recognized uh, over the summer. The Board of Water and Soil Resources had their tour in the Metro and of the five projects from across the metro, three of those were Anoka Conservation District projects. So we are very happy to have been recognized by Bowser for having outstanding projects. Um, I have experience in the Minnesota Conservation Corps. I have served there 
as well as being an intern at the Cedar Creek Ecosystem Science Reserve that is, uh, uh, that's up in um, Bethel, Minnesota, in the northern part of the county. I'm currently working in the healthcare industry, which definitely helps me understanding some of the health impacts that uh, pollutants and other things have on people. Uh, my main issue for the district would be ensuring water quality because Anoka is the recharge point for the water system in the metro area and that we need to ensure that the water going into our water system through infiltration is adequately uh, adequately filtered to make sure that there are no pollutants getting in. Thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll be um, alternating back and forth with the first person here. So Carl, you'll have this uh, first right. question here first. How would you educate and encourage citizens on being more water conscious? Well, well, the outreach is that I'd like to see done is I'd like to see more of a presence by the district at uh, community things such as the Anoka County Fair and just uh, general outreach to the citizens um, to ensure that you know they are being careful about their water usage. And yeah, um, the cities do do a good job of you know when they do imply uh, impose the uh, water restrictions and making sure that they get the people get educated through that and I think that's pretty good and that if you know we can build on that then great okay Nick Prue did you repeat the question sorry. um sure how would you educate and encourage citizens on being more water conscious I w there's multiple programs at local and state levels that you could leverage to use um, to, to educate folks about the importance of water conservation. Uh, but I think one of the basic things we could bring back to is, is what is a watershed? How does water move throughout the system? How does it impact folks um, throughout um, the water chain and the water? And how we can um, better make use of the resources we have. Uh, we've taken um, our, especially our groundwater, for granted. Uh, we're finding that in various parts of the metro, uh, we're, we don't have enough, or we, we're um, on a tangent that will will be um, um, lacking soon, and not only I mean, in terms of quality and quantity. So we need to bring that sort of uh, issues up as often as we can, and um, and then hopefully policy will follow. Thank you. Thank you, um, Nick. You'll have this next question first. Uh, there has been talk of the city of Ramsey changing from wells or groundwater to using the Mississippi for its drinking water. What are the pros and cons of this potential change? Uh, the initial pros would be uh, what I just mentioned about groundwater as being a limited water resource. And um, of course, it would be uh, more expensive if you were to take surface waters from the Mississippi because you'd have to do multiple treatments. And, and um, however, long term, it would, it would be much better for our environment if we were to uh, use surface waters and um, until uh, other technologies were become available where we would be able to um, recharge our groundwater in a much more sustainable way. But I think those technologies are far more expensive than um, working strictly on surface waters. Okay, Carl Tinklestad. Well, the uh, pro that I would see from that is that right now we take far more water out of our aquifers than we put back in and this would definitely help relieve some of that pressure as well as the fact that we do not utilize the Mississippi as much as we really could and as with the aquifers we're we're putting far too much back into the Mississippi than we're taking out and I would like to see that change so that some of our some of the counties and cities along the river would actually be utilizing the Mississippi rather than draining the aquifers, which is draining continuously lower and lower each year. And obviously the con would be cost. It is expensive, but I think it would be an investment that would be good for both the state and the county. Thank you. Okay, Carl, you'll be first on this next one. Are farmers with fields next to streams and lakes leaving a 50 foot, foot natural buffer to protect the waters from fertilizer, pesticides, and soil runoff? If not, what would you do as a soil and water conservation district supervisor? Um, 
I'm sorry, can you kind of repeat that? Uh, yeah, our farmers with fields next to streams and lakes, leaving a 50-foot natural buffer, which I think is the, the uh, law, uh, to protect waters from fertilizer, pesticides, and soil runoff. If not, what would you do? Well, right now they are utilizing the 50-foot buffer, and there are uh, programs through the state and the federal government that do help uh, compensate the farmers and encourage them to use that. Uh, that is one of the big incentives for the farmers is to be uh, going to the USDA and other uh, government agencies to be uh, getting the money for the conservation uh, purposes. And there are farmers out there who are very much concerned about the environment and definitely they want to help make sure that they are not a cause of the pollution. As far as what if there was not those 50 foot barriers, um, then I think we would have to, uh, we'd have to use uh, ponds or other like basins and, uh, and have filter, uh, infiltration filter, uh, systems with that, that would help uh, catch as much of the pollution as possible. Nick Pru. Yes, well, first of all, you're right. It is a, it's a state law and is administered by the county. Um, and so, first of all, they're breaking the law if there isn't one there. Um, but, I, but another tact you could take with this is that um, um, there's a reason for this lack of buffer. If this person is doing it, for instance, for uh, trying to maximize cropland, for instance, uh, one of the things that you can bring to this conversation is uh, the long-term impacts of um, this practice. You'll actually end up losing more of your property if you do it this way because what will eventually happen is the, the waterway or the stream will um, incise, um, entrench, and, um, and it'll actually start to expand and take out your cropland that you're trying to maximize at the time. So uh, it would have to be a conversation about you know, your management practices, what you're trying to get out of the property, and why you don't have the buffer. And then if, the, if not, I would say you'd have to try to enforce it. Thank you. Okay, Nick Peru, what, to what degree should or can the Soil and Water Conservation District influence homeowners on lakes and streams to use good conservation practices? Well, I think that should be one of the uh, primary things we do um, is to promote those types of activities that reduce the runoff and, into our lakes and waterways. Uh, we know over and over again that the amount of money that we spend on the back end of this equation is Im immense. You know, I mean, we have, uh, we're right now, we're spending lots of money on trying to reverse uh, the impacts of, of that exact same thing. Um, by implementing projects, um, in reinstating buffers, taking or treating nutrients, um, um, stabilizing bank, uh, bank erosion, all of those things cost money. And really what we should be doing is taking care of the underlying cause of this issue. And so this is one of the areas where you'd, you'd want to do it is through proper lakeshore and river shore management. Thank you. Carl Tingestad. Well. We do reach out to homeowners, and a few years back we did have, um, we did a massive project identification, and we identified over 10,000 projects that Anoka Conservation District could do, and we have been uh, working towards, a comp uh, towards meeting those projects. Uh, we get about, I think, a little over 100 a year usually uh, done, and that does include reaching out to these homeowners. And as far as the lakes and rivers, we do have a big project that we are currently working on on the Rum River, which will be restoring the banks along there, uh, especially the ones that are already failing or about to fail. Um, and definitely working with the homeowners uh, is uh, easy. It's usually, it takes some time for the most part, but it's doable and we have been doing it already quite successfully. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what is and should be done to deal with the invasive species like buckthorn, leafy spurge, and black locust trees? Carl Tinglestad first. Um, well, right now we've already been doing some projects to help with that. Um, as far as buckthorn, we did have a uh, large area of buckthorn that was treated and 
in one part of the Anoka Nature Preserve as well as we did a burn to remove some of the buckthorn there. As far as you know, aquatic invasive species, the best way to combat it is education. Letting people know that they need to be careful when they're taking their boats out of the water to make sure that they are not carrying any aquatic uh, hitchhikers, so to speak, with them into another body of water. Okay, Nick Pru. Invasive species management is an ongoing um, struggle. It's a, it's a complicated and, and time consuming and can be very expensive. So uh, I would take a step back and look at what are your objectives and goals for um, a given plant or a given area. So, um, you know, you're not going to be able to control and manage invasives or buckthorns across the county, for instance. So I think what needs to be done is a prioritization of where, where it makes the most sense, where we have the uh, best uh, chances of actually controlling the pest or the invasive that's there. What are we trying to protect? Um, and then, uh, then again, and, and then bringing it back to education, if it's a, a, a landowner and it, if it's at that scale, then that would be um, where, where staff can do one-on-ones. Okay, <clears throat> um, next question, maybe the last one. Looks like we're about out of time here. Uh, what is the source of funding for this, the Soil and Water Conservation District, and is there any other any way you can affect that funding? Uh, good question. I am not as familiar with where, oh, uh, Soil and Water Conservation District does get funded through uh, Bowser State uh, the Board and Water Soil um, Agency. It's a state agency. Uh, and I and I don't know much about how uh, the funding string can be altered. Okay, um, Carl Tingus did. Anoka Conservation District is very quite innovative with its funding. We actually get many sources of revenue coming from both the state through grants as well as cost shares uh, with local government units. We also uh, have been getting um, some money from innovative things that we have been doing, such as. The property that we own, the McKay property, we do rent out some of those suites, which provides extra revenue, and as well as the Rain Guardian pretreatment chamber, which our office has developed, and uh, that is, our employees actually gave uh, the patent to that over to us, the board uh, gave it to the districts. So that way, any money made from that helps towards the projects. Uh, we have no specific funding that is, ends up becoming uh, that ends up being a great part of what our funding sources are. There are all many sources that are spread out, and you know, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, uh, let's have our closing statements then, and um, mm -hmm. Carl, we'll start with you. All right. Well, first, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters the citizens who did come to attend, and of course the voters for coming out and voting. You know, it, we do appreciate it, and you know, it is a great thing to do your duty and vote for those that you believe should be elected into office. I have held this office for four years. I am a young person actively involved in Anoka County, and I bring that perspective of sustainability for future generations. Um, and I would like to ask you on November 4th to please vote. For Carl Tinglestad. Thank you. And Nick Pru. Yes, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters again for putting this forum on and the citizens who've taken time out of their schedules to uh, listen to us. Um, I appreciate that. Um, just to summarize, uh, my, advantage, or my qualifications for this position, um, I have many years of uh, experience with invasive species management, with uh, water quality studies, um, a lot of those technical solid background that you need in order to make decisions about how best to prioritize um, and target and work efficiently in a watershed, which is desperately needed given how difficult and competitive a lot of these grant programs are. So um, I hope that I could be an asset to this group, and this organization. And um, I thank everybody again, and please, uh, I ask for your vote this November. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now we have one other uh, district within the Soil and Water Conservation District that is up for re-election, District 4. 
And this includes Ham Lake, Blaine, Coon, uh, Circle Pines, Lionel Lakes, and Centerville. Uh, Mary Jo Trushan is the incumbent, and there is no one running against her, but we're going to hear from her an anyway. So, Mary Jo Trushan, would you give us your uh, opening statement, please? Yes. Um, good evening. I'm uh, Mary Jo Trushan, and I'm very un, un um, prepared to be on this side of the microphone. I'm usually helping to run the League of Women Voters uh, uh, candidates forums from the other side. So thank you for this opportunity not, so I could introduce myself and also talk a little bit about, about what our um, conservation district does. I am running unopposed for District 4, and you named all the cities except Lexington. Mm, okay. They're, it's small but powerful. <laughs> they are very um, concerned about their own local government, and that is what we are all about. Um, I became interested in the Anoka Conservation District about 20 years ago when I knew very little about, about its activities, but I had a great friend, Leslie Gilland. She too was a conservationist, a 4 -er, and a community activist, and she asked me to um, take over for her. She was ill. So after filling the last year of her term, then I've run four, four more times. So um, I've enjoyed this work very much. This is a policy board. There are five of us, and we ha are very blessed to have an exceptional staff of technical professionals. And uh, anything we accomplish, I assure you all, is due to the, the work of those dedicated people. So if, if there's anything we've accomplished, I, I think they are the ones who, who deserve a great deal of the credit. I quickly learned as much as I could uh, about what, what the office was about, and I learned there, there's always much more to learn. It's a special purpose unit of local government uh, where we are elected countywide. In Anoka County, we have five elected supervisors and no levy authority. I also learned that we live in a rapidly urbanizing county. Our work changes rapidly because of that. Our focus right now has been on water quality and stormwater uh, management. Thank you. Okay, first question. What financial, te technical, and hands-on assistance is available in managing watershed activities? What's available to us is, uh, to a great extent, is what we can pay for. We need to, be, um, we need to equip our professional staff with as much uh, technical um, um, computer support, program, computer programming support, as possible, but we also have a, an array of great partners, and we need to take advantage of working with them. We have the um, NRCS, our federal partners. We have the BWSR, which is our Board of Water and Soil Resources, um, um, organized and, and run by the legislature, and and we have um, Anoka County, and we we really rely very heavily on help to save us money and help us with te technical expertise from the county. Very important are the watershed districts. We, we um, actually can charge them fees and we can share our expertise and share um, our concerns for making water quality better. Thank you. Uh, what qualifications do you look for when hiring staff? When hiring staff, we are fortunate we have a manager who brings us the three best qualified applicants. So to tell you the truth, if you if you serve on this board, you are most fortunate to have Chris Lord working in the office, and he will uh, bring us the three, three best candidates. And uh, so I only have to uh, choose between three very good people. So it's always good to see if they're a good fit for our office, and that's what I try to do. Because with such a hardworking, dedicated staff, you need people who can get along with each other. And so that's one very important thing, I think, that I look for. Okay. What steps should the Soil and Water Conservation District take to prevent the spread of AIS, aquatic invasive species like zebra mussels, Eurasian water milfoil, and carp on public waters? Well, that's a toughie. It, it, it all requires um, bigger partners than we are, not all, but quite a lot of it does. And some of that work is um, the carp. The carp is being um, addressed. No one wants the carp to get into um, into our big fishing lakes or into the Mississippi any farther than it has already progressed. And I believe there is a bill in Congress that is supposed to put a barrier um, 
in our in our lock and dams in the in the um, in the cities. If that is if that happens, then the work our staff has done to try and and put a barrier at the um, at the Coon Rapids Dam would probably not be needed. But that's something we've worked on. Okay. What is? Can you explain the relationship with Bowser, the Board of Water and Soil Resources? They're our overseer. We are, we are under statute. We're established in the state of Minnesota as a local level of government, a special, um, a special uh, unit of government, and our, um, we follow what is written for us in statute. And BWSR is very helpful. They they make sure we are audited that um, that we uh, uh, get our. Uh, cost share money. They allocate the money that comes from the le legislature. Um, they're they're helpful in in many many ways. We can lean on their their expertise um, uh, just across the board. They they set up trainings for us. They help us at our at our national convention and our state convention. Thank you. Um, what are the what's the relationship with other soil and water conservation districts around us? Do you work with oh. others? As that's a great thing about conservation districts. I know there's been a movement afoot to, um, to work on governance in, in water issues. Water is so important uh, to all of us. And so there has been a, a great um, oh, emphasis on um, working on how is water governed. And somebody's solution was get rid of soil and water conservation districts. So I, I thought that was um, well-meaning, but I don't think it um, is something that would be helpful in the long run. Soil and water conservation districts can work across county lines, and we have uh, we can work with the federal government, and so we can we are important in things like the Red River, where we're working with that solution um, uh, uh, in in more than one state, and uh, so yes, we have a metro organization with uh, the eleven metro counties, and we do a great deal of work through that partnership. What are, you, what are your goals for the coming term? Well, for the coming term, we have some real challenges. Uh, we are writing. We do our work uh, based on a five-year comprehensive plan. We're currently writing that. If any of, of you people who came to hear us tonight have any comments for us, we have a, a telephone number, we have a website, um, and you can help us with any of ideas you have. We would welcome that with our... Um, with our comprehensive planning process. Then we work on an annual plan and a yearly budget. And so those are, that's, that is the way that we organize ourselves. So the, the um, supervisors are the policy people, and then we direct our staff with the money we have available to go in whatever direction we feel that we could be most effective. Right now it's stormwater management for the most part, but soil health is moving on the horizon. Thank you. How would you educate and encourage citizens on being more water conscious? That's a very good question. I, I have been an, an environmental educator for 20 years, and I long ago almost gave up on trying to educate adults about anything uh, to do with water or the environment. Most, of, most adults are mainly concerned and should be on raising their families and paying for their, their lives. Children are very open-minded. I've tried to help with, and our, all of our conservation districts um, help with the Envirothon, which is uh, held at the Arboretum. If, at least the, um, the Metro one is held at the Arboretum. Um, we cooperate with 4-H efforts to do field trip days, natural resources field trip days. Um, we don't have a budget to hire a professional educator. We do work, though, with the watershed districts who do have professional educators. And we did um, one great effort, which I thought was well-received and, and made use of YouTube with a new, with a new uh, young person. We uh, tried to, to do the social media. So. OK. OK, time for your closing statement. Mary Jo Trushan. Well, I've just had, a, had I've met wonderful people and been involved in, in, I think, important efforts over the last 20 years. And I'm currently very proud to be the chair of the, of the board. So I would appreciate your vote, even if I'm running unopposed. It just means that you're paying attention <laughs> and you know that we exist, because I know we're, we're like an, 
I'm, I'm, this is not a pun, we're sort of an underground group. Very hard to, uh, uh, to find out much about us. But I welcome you to, to uh, visit our website. We're trying to keep that up. And it's, it's www.anoka.swcd.org. So that's very simple to remember. And using that website, you can contact any of our technical experts. If you have any questions, please contact uh, any of us on the board or our office staff. Thank you very much. Again, I'd like to remind you that the views expressed in this forum are those of the candidates, not those of the League of Women Voters, and we are not in endorsing or, or um, uh, sponsoring any of these candidates. This concludes the Anoka County Candidates Forum. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, ABC, thank you all for coming and for watching. And thank you, candidates, for being willing to serve the community and participate in the democratic process by running for office. Such a crucial part of our, our democracy. Um, we invite you to visit the League of Women Voters Minnesota website. You can find out more about uh, the candidates on your ballot uh, with the link to the, the uh, minvotes.org website. And, um, and get all your other election questions answered there as well. And remember to vote on General Election Day, November 4th. Thank you so much. Good job. Good job. Thank you.